Hi Anna and viewers, uh, my name's Rick, I'm 48 years old, born in the UK, now live in Ibiza. I thought I'd send a little a little clip over uh, with regards, I saw Anna, the thing that you did last night in the pub about fun being cancelled. I thought I'd just give you a little experience of what, what the lockdown, the whole situation's been like here in Ibiza, maybe from a little bit of a different perspective. I think we're slightly ahead of you in the plans. I, what I think is that there's, there's, uh, there's plans to, to make the world, the one world, of, or the one world government. So everything's going to be the same. I think it was easier for us, um, uh, for, the, for them over here, because any, anywhere that's more of a militaristic state, more of a police kind of state, it was, it was easier. What happened with our lockdown? We were in a bar um, in the afternoon on a Saturday. The police just come round and said, get out, go home. Uh, the king's made a decree. You've got to stay in isolation and the house arrest until further notice because there's a killer plague that's going to come and kill everyone. Um, it was only over the weekend through the news and social media that we found out that everything was closed uh, it was a severe house arrest you know we were allowed out once a week for emergencies for, for food or to the pharmacy or the petrol station and that was it you weren't allowed out for exercise anything like that um, and everyone kind of stuck by what was going on everyone wanted to kind of protect people and mo but more than anything they wanted to protect the the tourist industry so when everything kind of opened up after after the four phases of, of lockdown that we had to go through then some more shops could open you could go out to exercise um, but when they introduced the end of the phases which was the new normal they said right now you got to wear masks and the masks are mandatory you can't buy food without a mask you have to wear a mask if you're on the street it's fine or arrest if you don't and I, I think this is coming everywhere they're talking about second spike second wave second lockdowns I'm hoping it's not as harsh as it was here but I think eventually that's that's the way it's going to be um, I've seen Anthony Fauci come out now the day before yesterday I don't know if anyone's seen this yet that now we've got the masks the next thing is goggles <laughs> we've got to wear goggles apparently um, when we got ours it's only a suggestion at the minute but they said it might be mandatory at some point to wear goggles and a mask when you come out the house uh, as you saw as you say in Anna yesterday you know, the fun's been banned and I thought I'd give you some idea of what it's like over here in Ibiza um, you don't forget it's Ibiza <laughs> It's, you know, it's not, it's not Basin Stoke, it's not, which is, this is Ibiza, the dance capital of the world, where dancing's now illegal. Um, you can't stand up and move about. If you hear any music, security, if you're in a bar or a restaurant or anything like that, security will come around and tell you to sit down, calm down. If you're waving your hands around, you're asked to put your hands down and just sit there quietly. Um, my friend's a DJ, a resident DJ in one of the establishments here, one of the major brand establishments. And he told if anyone's dancing, you sacked immediately. He nearly got sacked the other day for playing Wonderwall. Wonderwall's now banned. That's classed as a subvertive song, subversive, because because uh, people sing along. You can't have anyone singing along. Anna, you're right. When you said fun's been cancelled, it really has. Um, you know, the lockdowns here were really harsh on, on the kids. You know, kids weren't allowed to leave the house for for two months. I, I used to walk into town for my weekly necessary allowed trip to the shops. And you just see all the kids on the balconies with the, the, the faces pressed up against the bars, like crying, ball in front of them. They don't want to play anymore. It was one of the most heartbreaking things I think I've had to experience in my life so far. 
what we've done to the kids. I saw um, a family the other day walking down the prom. Now, there's some exceptions to where you have to wear masks and where you don't. Um, and one is there's the beach, the swimming pool, and on the prom. I saw a British family on holiday walking down the prom. And it's good that people are awakening now, that they're starting to believe that there's something not right. With the family there, there was the mum, dad, and, and granddad, it looked like, and the son, who was about eight to ten years old. And the family were walking around without wearing the mask, saying, Come on, Timmy, take your mask off. You know, you don't have to wear it here. It's not legal. You have to. It's Get some fresh air and you get some vitamin D. Uh, you know, take that bloody mask off. It's it's 35 degrees outside, you're going to die. And the kid was just, no, no, please don't make me take it off. He was terrified. And I'm thinking, what have we done to the kids? You know? And that's, that's without the lockdown that we had here, where the kids were basically in solitary confinement for, 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 for two months. You know, what, what's that going to do to them? So it's, this is kind of a bit of a warning for people in the UK. It's like, don't let that happen here. Don't let that, don't let that happen to your kids. And it's time to stand up for ourselves. You know, these people are pushing and pushing. What, masks? Now, goggles? Goggles. I mean, goggles. <laughs> it, it would be funny if it wasn't so sinister. Uh, the other news that I heard yesterday with the Anthony Fauci goggles thing was that uh, it's the second dog to die in America that's tested positive for COVID. Uh, so now, uh, apparently from this weekend, everyone's expected to socially distance from their pets. So I'm concerned, Anna and everyone listening, where's this going to go from here, you know? I read a story last week. I can't remember what country it was offhand, uh, but a mink did test a mink had tested positive for COVID, um, and so they'd called the whole population of mink in the country. It was like a hundred thousand mink. Well, now they're saying pets are testing positive for COVID. I'm concerned where this is going. Are we going to call all our pets? I believe there's a communist state coming in, and you know it. You're not allowed to have pets. That's far too much love. You know, this is just what I think. But where's that going to go from there? Once you, you you have to call pets, your pets. I mean, okay, they're animals, but as anyone knows that your pets a member of your family. So once we've, it's been normalised, kind of euthanising, euthanising uh, our pets, me those members of the family, what, what what's going to happen to... You know, crazy Uncle Frank or, uh, you know, strange brother-in-law Bobby, you know, won't take his vax, listens to David Icke. You know, what's going to happen to those people? They're going to be demonised like people on Benefits were so many years ago on things like Benefit Street and a massive media campaign to demonise these people. I mean, where is this leading? It's the new normal. I mean, we haven't had a, a death in Ibiza for, for over a hundred days. It's the, one of the healthiest places. Yet, the conditions for freedoms are getting stricter and stricter and tighter and tighter. Why? And if they are now, well, when are they ever gonna get any better? Because flu season's coming up soon, people are gonna start getting sick again. You know, how is this going to get better? What, what what do you think? I mean, what do anyone listening to this, what do you think? Do you think they're going to backtrack on all these things? Are they going to say, all oh, right, everyone's okay now? Maybe when you've had the vax. I'm just concerned. Anyway, these are my thoughts, Anna. And, uh, you know, I wish you all the best. Thanks for everything you've done. God bless you, you know, for giving people a voice. I hope people continue to talk out spread the word it's time we need to stand together before who knows what's going to happen my, my father was polish he's he was in a prisoner of war camp during nazi germany and I, I escaped after a few years i've grew up listening to the stories don't let this happen again